Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week I'm going to show you the leg slash table base build to that desktop that I just showed you there. And what we're doing is a book match, kind of a mirror image table base, which I'd never seen before, and I'm sure I didn't invent, but I wanted to see if I could actually make it work, how it looked in my head, and overall I was really, really happy with it. So I'll take you through the entire process here. This piece of wood I'm using here wasn't an accident or a leftover piece of wood that I had. I specifically went out and found a piece of wood uh, that matched the vision I had in my head. And what I wanted was these vertical lines. You can kind of faintly see them there. And I could have got a really highly figured piece, but I just didn't want really gaudy legs. I just wanted a really interesting set of legs. And that's why I chose this piece with those kind of distinct vertical lines. Before we get too far, I should mention that I have a full video on that desktop build. It's a pretty interesting build. I used some liquid brass resin. I used kind of a smart desk, some really cool outlets and light features. So I will include a link in the video description to that desktop build that I will have on my YouTube page as well. If you're not keeping up with what I'm doing so far is I made one mock set of legs out of just two by four stock, but it's gonna be the exact size that my finished legs are gonna be. So I'm gonna use each of those pieces as a template to transfer that over to these nice walnut pieces. And if that sounds a little confusing, hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense here in a couple minutes. But right now I'm just breaking it down to the individual sizes and uh, individual pieces for that table base that I'll be putting together here in the end. This here is the part that you probably want to pay attention to, though, is this is what made it so interesting, is I am re it, which basically means cutting in half. And this is what's going to give us that book-matched or mirror image look on the table base that you saw there at the start. And since I'm cutting these inch and a half thick pieces down to about three quarters of an inch, I want my table legs to finish it inch and a half. So what I'm doing is I'm having to glue them to other walnut stock pieces. And so once I get them glued together, you'll see what I'm talking about. But I am essentially taking that three quarter inch piece I just cut, gluing it to another three quarter inch piece, and then I will match that mirror image book match after the glue up. I'm doing my glue up with tight bond three glue and these parallel clamps. You don't have to use either that glue or those clamps, but they work well for me. I'm doing a quick pass through the planer and here's where you'll really see that book match. You can see the mirror image that those two pieces show and you wouldn't get that unless you did that resaw book match process. So now I've transferred that template on to a piece of plywood that's gonna be a little bit more consistent and I can start to cut out my final leg shape. Before we get into the exact template routing, because I'm not gonna cut the final shape out with the bandsaw, I had this bit of blowout here, and so I needed to fix it since I went through this entire book match process. I couldn't just throw a new piece of wood on there. I would've had to do the entire resaw, the entire book match process, the glue up, the planing, everything again, and it, then the wood probably wouldn't even match the other set of legs. So this is what I came up with to fix this little flaw there. A friend of mine that's a welder once said that he liked welding so much more than woodworking because if he messed up a piece, he could just weld in a new one and that that was impossible to do with wood. I told him there's always something you can do and this is what we're gonna do here in this case. And overall, it was actually a pretty good solution. My wife, I actually never told her about this and she's never noticed it and she's super observant, but uh, you will be able to see it if you know where to look for. But I tried to match the grain lines up just right and overall, uh, I'll show you at the end just how it turned out. And if you're wondering why I have a giant hole in the middle of my leg template, it's because when I was doing the top, I needed to make a template for these outlets I was dropping in. And I thought this was a scrap piece of wood. So I drilled the hole in there until I realized it was actually my leg template. So luckily I drilled it right in the middle and didn't hurt the template. But that is why I have a giant hole in the middle of my leg template. And if you've never used a template to build furniture before, it's a really cool, remarkably easy way because you don't have to worry about getting the same consistent cuts if you set your angles. You know, in your miter saw, if maybe it's just off by a half of a degree. If you use your template, it's always going to be exactly the same. And so since I was going to have essentially four leg pieces made out of this template, all of them were going to be the exact same angles. Everything was going to be perfectly consistent since I was using this template and that router bit there. For the lower piece that connects those two legs, I wanted a slight angle. And I apologize because apparently my camera was turned off for the cut. So you're gonna have to imagine me cutting that five degrees. And you can see there, it's just a really slight angle. And this is gonna give a little bit of depth, make it a little bit more interesting than if the pieces just went straight across. And if these tools look a little confusing to you, this is a vacuum clamp by Festool, super cool tool, along with a domino. And each one of those tools is like $1,500, so not for everybody. Um, I tend to do a lot of this type of joinery, this type of furniture, so it's definitely worth it to me. 
but if you want to do something similar, you could accomplish it with a couple of clamps and some wood dowels. So don't think you have to have this crazy expensive setup just to do a few connections like I'm doing. If you look closely, you can see that the edges near the glue joints are a little bit darker, and that's because I added shellac, and that's going to help the glue come off a lot easier after it's dried. So it's a pretty good standard practice to add a little bit of shellac to those glue joints, and it'll help it sand off easier like right here. I should also mention that I sanded these before I glued them up to 150 grit to kind of reduce a lot of the sanding I was going to have to do when it was all together. And you can see there is my repaired spot. And as I mentioned, if you know where to look, you can definitely see it. But overall, it was a pretty good solution. Getting the glue joint out of the corners without really gouging into your piece can be a frustrating kind of tough task. And this kind of bent neck chisel that I have there is a really good tool for getting those corners out. I'm going to have two pieces of wood that run the width of the table that connect each of these table legs and one that's going to provide a lot of stability and two it's going to provide a good place to hide wires behind. Since that joint in the middle was five degrees the same was going to be true of these pieces that run the width of the table so I just had a five degree cut on my miter saw the same as I did on the center there, added a domino to each side and everything would glue up nice and parallel to my tabletop. If you're just getting into woodworking or maybe you've been in woodworking for a long time, you've probably realized how expensive clamps are and how many you need. So my advice to new woodworkers that are on a little bit more of a budget is get a bunch of these pipe clamps like this because you can swap them into longer pipes, shorter pipes, unlike a parallel clamp that's the size that it's going to be no matter what. So I had to go buy some extra long, I think six foot long pieces of pipe for these clamps, but I didn't have to buy, you know, a new set of clamps that was going to be, you know, $70, $80 each. If you watch very many of my videos or comment on any of my videos, you probably know that I'm pretty good at responding to almost every single comment in the comments below. So if I'm rushing anything, if I've skipped anything, um, I spend so much time making these videos that sometimes I forget uh, to add a certain part in there, explain why I did something. So please feel free to ask me in the comments. I'm pretty good at responding to those. Or if you're new to my page and you like what you see, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out and enables me to keep making more content like these videos. One of the things that people seem to really like is all the different tools that I review and that I'll display here because I give you a pretty honest feedback of what I think. And this is a new type of Forstner bit that I actually love now. I use this on the top build too. I use some big two inch ones and it gives a really clean cut. It doesn't look like it would give a clean cut. I, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. That's how you know it's not a sponsored post, but I will find it and I'll include a link in the video description below. So I really like that new style of Forstner bit. And again, sorry if I can't remember the name off the top of my head. And what I'm doing here is now that I got my table base perfectly centered on the table, I'm going to use a brad point bit that is the exact size of my hole, come through, mark the center, and that way I know my threaded inserts are going to be in the exact center of my holes that I have uh, pre-drilled for that table base. Using these depth stop collars with these brad point bits, you don't have to use the depth stop collars, but it does prevent you from blowing through the top of your table, which I've never done, but I've had friends that have done it. And make sure you use the right size drill bit for these threaded inserts, or you can kind of get some splintering and maybe even crack your, your top, which probably wouldn't happen because it's a pretty sharp thread on these threaded inserts, but it does go in a lot easier if you use the right size bit. I'm using a Osmo 3054 finish, which is the same finish I was using for my top. And it's a really easy to use, really nice finish that you can get uh, completely dust free. It's not like a polyurethane that the dust in your shop's gonna stick on it. I actually have a whole table finishing video if you'd like, I'll include a link to that in the video description. But you pretty much wipe it on, get a little friction, which is you can see why I'm rubbing it so vigorously with this uh, red floor pad. And uh, then when you're done, you just wipe it off and it leaves a perfect finish. For a tabletop, they, I think they advised to let it set on there about 45 minutes or so before you wipe it off. For the base, it's not going to require a ton of stain protection, so I probably wiped it off you know, after 5 or 10 minutes. But just using those blue shop rags, make sure you get every last bit of it off. And you can see there is the spot that I repaired. Not perfect, but you're not going to be immediately drawn to it when you walk into the room. Okay, here are the finished studio shots. You can see there really what I'm talking about with that mirror image book match table base and overall i just couldn't have been happier with it i wish i didn't have that one bad spot on the lower part of the leg there but i wanted a pretty understated you know not a gaudy super figured leg and this is pretty much exactly what i was hoping for here's another shot of the top with the light in it and again i have a full video on building this tabletop cool uh, liquid brass resin 
power outlets, all kinds of cool stuff in there. So I will recommend, it's actually probably a much better, more exciting video to watch. So feel free to check that out now. I think you guys deserve a little bit of credit for making it this far in the video. So I'm trying something new now. So my name is Cam, C-A-M. So start your question or comment below with my name, C-A-M. And I promise you, I will answer your question or comment first. And if you guys like this type of thing, I will do a new word, key phrase, something to give a little bit of credit to the people that actually make it to the end of the video. So let me know what you think of that in the comments below. Let me know what you think of this build. And of course, please subscribe for more videos just like this one. Thanks again.